I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan. <laughs>
well beyond the other royals who have less pressing concerns around security because they collaborate with the press and they get good press or at least it's not vitriolic and and relentlessly attacking of them. Just to make it clear and to give you an idea why the olive branch by Charles in this matter may not be quite so genuine. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan were denied full royal security by the RAVEC committee. RAVEC stands for Royal and VIP Executive Committee. What is interesting is that the committee has been comprised of members of Her Majesty's government, but also members of the royal household. Yes, and they contribute and decide whether a royal in question should have security, and if so, at what level. Thanks to the Oprah interview, which made many people a tiny bit more aware of the not-so-nice behind-the-scenes of the royal institution and its treatment of the new American biracial family member, Meghan, it's clear that the royals do have a degree of control and influence over Ravik's decision. Prince Harry yeah. mm-hmm. are gonna have your security removed. Yeah, yeah. And, I even, and I even wrote letters to his family saying, please, it's, yeah. it's very clear the protection of me or Archie is not a priority. I accept that, that is fine. Please keep my husband safe. I see the death threats, I see the racist propaganda, please keep him safe. Mm. Please don't pull his security and announce to the world when he and we are most vulnerable. And they said it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. But in this case of the security of the Sussexes, it was clear that there was resistance despite the practical pleading for the security. Although for obvious reasons, the British press and royalists would not emphasize and focus on it, This was quite a shocking revelation of the Oprah interview because, as we know, Harry and Meghan set up home in Canada when they stepped away from the firm to live in a Commonwealth country where Meghan had lived for seven years before. That was when she played Rachel Zane in the very successful American drama series Suits. Now, this is another thing that questions the genuineness of Charles's olive branch because no sooner had they gotten there to start their new life the security was pulled and the location was leaked. Very suspicious. But even though it was well reported that Charles was not happy about Harry and Meghan leaving the firm and in a cult-like way practically tried to emotionally blackmail Harry into staying, let's not get into who might have been behind this leaking. Well, whatever the case, I think that a loving father, knowing his son and his wife who are high-profile royal figures and who have already experienced death threats and attempts on their life by white supremacist, royalist extremists, should surely have made arrangements to make sure that they were protected. Especially because it wasn't just his child that was in potential danger and temporarily homeless, it was also his six-month-old so-called beloved grandson, Archie. Remember that aside from public funds, Charles now has a substantial private wealth. And I think it's reasonable to think that a loving father and a grandfather that has the necessary resources and connections would have tried to ensure that they were safe. Perhaps that's unless, of course, he was involved in that situation that Harry and Meghan found themselves in, vulnerable and exposed, or maybe that he just didn't mind that it had happened. So ironically, it took a man that Harry and Meghan didn't even know that well to be the father that King Charles wasn't to them and to be their saving grace. Yeah, that was Tyler Perry. He offered Harry and Meghan a temporary refuge and let them stay at his place in Cali and provided them with security until they got on their feet. What I was reaching out to her for was because they were giving her hell. Right. And a lot of it was because she was a black woman. Yeah, absolutely. And I flat out, no denying it, I, I completely knew that. And I wanted to reach out and let her know that there was somebody there for her. Mm-hmm. Good job, Tyler. So now that I've addressed the background to the olive branch, I also just want to cut the crap because in light of what I've just said, the press briefings around the jubilee of the then Prince Charles being apparently concerned about Harry and Meghan's security, offering his home while in the UK and wanting to see his grandchildren just doesn't come across as truly genuine to me. It all seems a bit fake, right? I mean, why give an olive branch that doesn't solve the problem long term when also in the background you're a allegedly still preventing or at least not helping them by using your influence to get 
UK royal protection for them and you also didn't make a statement of support that they should get this. Now, this is just one example of a questionable olive branch from King Charles to Harry and Meghan. But since the Queen has passed and he's made his first speech as King, the media picked up on another apparent olive branch of Charles calling out Harry and Meghan in his speech and declaring his love for them. I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their lives overseas. Now, I'm going to deal with that one in a separate video because, again, there are questions over how genuine that olive branch was against the narratives of him apparently trying to humiliate his son at the same time. For example, he had refused to allow Prince Harry to wear his military uniform for his grandmother's funeral, despite him being a 10-year vet and bar Prince Andrew, the only member of the family to actually do active service for her in the army and in Afghanistan. Whilst on the other hand, allowing members of the family who did not do active service to wear uniforms ceremonially. So it felt that this was done to put him in his place and to humiliate and punish him for stepping away from the institution, which is a long held grievance by the institution. But it took online and even media outrage, where even Sussex trolls such as Piers Morgan said that it was a bad look. Just check out his tweet here. Only then did Charles go back on his position and allow Prince Harry to wear his garments the next day for a vigil. But if your love is true, why would you want to humiliate and punish your son publicly and then turn around and say, I love you and your wife very much? I think that this Twitter user has it just about right, where she says, I've been suspicious from the start about these olive branches and gestures. It's all a load of BS. I really think that they are trying to humiliate and control Harry and Meghan. The games the palace are playing won't work and it's making Charles look bad. But for now, let's just move on quickly to the Queen herself. Now, these olive branch headlines have also been frequently used to also weaponise the now late Queen against the Sussexes. I will be doing a separate video on that concept of weaponising the Queen, but here the media working with and for the royals used near identical headlines about olive branches, this time just swapping Charles's name for the Queen's in order to show that the basis of the Sussex's relationship with the Queen was strained and that if she was having issues with them, they surely must be terrible people. It's easy to forget and some may not even know that Harry has a great relationship with the Queen. It's according to the British media, everything Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan do it is uh, a slap in the face of the Queen. Author Robert Hardman, who has been writing books on the Queen for over 20 years, shared his thoughts on the Queen's relationship with Harry when asked on one of those panel shows that are supposed to be dedicated to talking about the royal family, but which somehow always end up being mostly about Harry and Meghan and Harry and Meghan bashing. What have you learned about her relationship with Prince Harry and Meghan? Well, I think the relationship with Harry is still very strong. Um, it's, uh, you know, there is a real, uh, there's, there's a, a fondness, a bond there. He's devoted to her. Um, and, and she's very good at compartmentalising, talking to people who know her very well. You know, there's, there's, there's sort of family and there's business. So the whole issue of them leaving the royal family, um, their sussexroyal.com website, all that kind of thing, their, their patronages, that comes under, that's business, that gets dealt with separately. But in terms of grandmother, grandson relationship, it's still, it's, still, it's still very strong. If we are to believe that the Queen was on bad terms with Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan, here we have headlines suggesting that the Queen offered them olive branches to attend the Jubilee. Now, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan announced that they were excited to attend. But let's not forget that they had already made a secret visit to her three months before at Easter. This was before Harry's Invictus Games in The Hague, Amsterdam. So there was clearly no real beef between them. And they had arranged to go and see her. So why would she then on a second occasion have to invite them via this public olive branch? And at the Jubilee, 
the Queen was able to see Lilibet for the first time and to see Archie once again. So that sounds all good vibes to me. Well, the media didn't stop there. They really like to run this olive branch narrative that makes it look like Harry and Meghan had some real issues with the Queen and they were beefing, when obviously they weren't. So not a month later, they were up to the same old tricks again with headlines saying that the Queen was offering them yet another clearly unnecessary olive branch in July for them to visit again. Another one. I mean, all these visits, hey, I mean, maybe they actually loved seeing them. You'd think, right? But wait, there's more. Hang on to your seat, baby. Then, as if that wasn't enough, as soon as Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan announced that they would be visiting the UK and Germany for a tightly packed four days in September, the media got excited yet again and we had more headlines of the Queen offering olive branches for a visit and even sleepovers. I personally think that the media just didn't think it through. Not only was this an offer when they clearly had no space in the four-day schedule, but to add to that, the olive branch was for a sleepover in Balmoral, Scotland, which made it even more unrealistic, and the Queen obviously would have known that. Unlike Charles's olive branches, these ones from the Queen, to me, were clearly made up by the press under the guise of having some random, anonymous source that the media will never tell us about. But... They would have had to have been on the basis that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan weren't in communication with the Queen as normal. And they've already told us that they had Zoom meetings and would call her often. Does the Queen know how to use a Zoom? Uh, yes. Wow. Both my grandparents this do. This is crazy. We've Zoomed them a few times. They've seen Archie running around. But my, my grandfather, instead of like pressing leave meeting, yes. he just goes... <laughs> So if we were to believe the headlines, the Queen was either speaking to them on the phone, but still choosing to offer public olive branches to them that she knew were impossible and using the press to communicate it to them. It makes no sense. Why did the Queen work privately with Prince Harry and Princess Meghan, privately arranging a Mission Impossible style secret visit at Easter, only to then make future and a random, unrealistic offers for them to visit publicly. My theory, as I've alluded to earlier, is that these olive branches from the Queen were completely manufactured by the press, so that when Prince Harry and Princess Meghan didn't visit, it would look like they had snubbed the Queen and her fictitious olive branches. So just look at these headlines here. Now this feeds into the narrative that I mentioned at the top of the video of the olive branch being designed to make the taxpayer funded royals such as the Queen and the Charles and the rest of them look magnanimous and that in contrast to that making Harry and Meghan look difficult and petulant. Just look at these headlines showing that they declined these fictional olive branches. But of course the narrative will never make reference to the fact that the olive branches were impossible for them to meet anyway and perhaps in respect of Charles they didn't want to go because they knew that they were fake and disingenuous and maybe a setup even. No one expected the Sussexes to return to the UK shores so soon after the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. But you know, Harry and Meghan stay working, and if that means travelling back to Salty Island every so often, then so be it, especially for meaningful causes. Prince Harry and Princess Meghan's Whistle Stop trio event in early September, planned, as I said, for four days, included a keynote speech by Meghan in Manchester for One Young World, a trip to Dusseldorf for Harry's Invictus Games One Year to Go event, and lastly, the World Child Charity Awards in London, which Harry is a patron of. Typically, news of their return again generated all these headlines from page 101 of the Olive Branch playbook. But I noticed that the then Prince Charles came with the quickness again with the whole come stay with me Olive Branch, even though I've done nothing to support you these last two and a half years. 
So again, yeah, he was reported, as I believe, by his own press briefing to have invited Harry and Meghan to stay with him whilst he was in Scotland. Now, of course, as I said before with the Queen, this makes no sense as it was nowhere near where any of the Sussex's events were taking place in their very tight four day schedule. So it was obviously done for show rather than a realistic, genuine offer that they could have accepted even if they wanted to. But I have to say that Charles really made good use of the PR. We had headlines like this from Cosmopolitan and the Mirror saying that he had invited Harry and Meghan, but they had declined his offer. Of course, as royal reporters friendly with the royals write the articles, this one had royal reporter Russell Myers keeping the bad cop Sussexes and the good cop working royal family member theme going. So writing from Charles's point of view and using well-selected quotes from secret insiders saying that Charles had made this offer despite attacks from the Sussexes, which, by the way, had apparently been increasing in vigour. What exactly did they say around that time in September about Charles that was attacking? Nothing. But with the Oprah Winfrey interview a year and a half ago, this was probably referring to Meghan's more recent interview in August with The Cut, where she actually said nothing about the royal family, but what she did do was criticise the press. However, the reader doesn't need to know those details, right? The press just want to give the impression that Meghan and Harry were doing wrong to the royals again. Anyway... Charles again was presented as a picture of grace and purity as he is referred to offering the branch as, I quote, an opportunity for everyone to take stock and to relax. Of course, this is well and good, but I'm going to raise the issue of genuineness again because Charles' perceived attempt to embarrass and isolate Harry during the Queen's funeral event really undermines these wonderfully written words and suggest that the olive branch that Charles was offering was not truly a peace offering. Also, I would say that the headlines by royal reporter Rebecca English, that the family were incredulous that Meghan would dare to escort her beloved husband to visit his grandmother, and therefore her grandmother-in-law, upon news that she was seriously ill. I would say that's pretty attacking to Meghan, right? So the pure and gracious mask slipped there, right? Anyway, despite Harry and Meghan's jam-packed schedule before the Queen's death, and together with the headlines of Harry and Meghan now declining fictional olive branches from the Queen, and the very likely disingenuous ones from King Charles II, The olive branch narrative was being used with full commitment to be anything other than an olive branch, but instead just a stick to beat them with. It also just doesn't make sense. I mean, isn't it amazing that on the one hand, the press with the royals collaborating build this horrible character profiles for Meghan and Harry as being petulant bullies that are horrible to their family and attacking them on an increasing basis. But then there are all these offers coming into them, left, right and centre from the royals, asking them to visit them and even sleep over. And which always somehow end up in the papers too. Now, can you imagine the stories that would leak if they did actually stay with Charles or the Queen? Now let's go back. Let's take it back to the secret visit that Prince Harry and Princess Meghan made to the Queen at Easter. Look at how the press turned that into a situation where... They're damned if they do visit and they're damned if they don't. Despite the press on that occasion having no notice in advance. Uh, A bit of a surprise and a rare family reunion. Yeah, a surprise indeed, Tom, and proof that Meghan and Harry can get into and out of Windsor without a camera seeing them. And I know that because I was in Windsor today with a camera. And as you can see, uh, I'm now at home. The press later made out some ridiculous headlines that Prince Harry and Princess Meghan exploited the Queen by ambushing her with Netflix cameras. They popped in to see the Queen. Fantastic. She is 95. 
She's in frail health at the moment, and I'm sure she was thrilled to see them. Um, however, whether they actually brought their... Because they're being filmed by Netflix at the moment as well, aren't they? So whether they actually brought the Netflix... Oh, that's crew, a good point. Mm. I hadn't thought of that. Whether they and it was also said that Charles had a terse meeting with Harry with reports saying, like this one, that Charles was not happy about Harry and Meghan visiting the Queen. What was very interesting, I um, spoke to a source very close to the Prince of Wales about this meeting and was told that it was Charles's absolute insistence that he had the meeting with Harry before Harry and Meghan went in to see the Queen. Mm. Now, if Harry sees that as gatekeeping and guarding, it absolutely is. Gatekeeping? So, let me get this straight. Prince Harry, as a grown-ass man... And his grandmother, the Queen, who at this time had nearly 70 years work experience in the role of British monarch, decided of their own volition that they wanted to see each other. And they did this in a Mission Impossible style way. She didn't tell her courtiers, her friends, and she damn sure didn't tell Charles. Harry and Meghan went into stealth mode. We are talking covert operation precision timing they entered the uk incognito bypassing royal reporters they saw the queen went in out and they dipped do you mean to tell me that if it is true and it's not fake news that charles did see them that man like charles decided that he was going to put stipulations and conditions on prince harry carrying out his pre-arranged meeting with his grandmother I don't know. I mean, I have to consider that someone else might have been inclined to say to him, Arubai, shut up. Shut up. And if that didn't work and man like Charles started to get vocal, some might have also been inclined to say to him, Please refrain from using any further obscenities in the presence of these people. I've warned you. I'll be forced to thrash you. Or just be more straightforward and say, oh, Get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. Being serious though. If it was true that Charles did see Harry and Meghan in the corridor, and certainly I think this is a narrative that Charles is okay with because it was put out by one of his Royal Rota reporters, such as Katie Nichols, which you heard from earlier, then in reality, it does once again throw into question the genuineness of Charles's previous olive branches to Harry and Meghan, begging them to come and stay with him. Because in this case, all of a sudden he's against them visiting his family and he seems to be spoiling for a fight, doing up bodyguard in the corridor. Maybe perhaps it's because they weren't interested in seeing him. But like this headline says, Prince Charles was reportedly not happy about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's secret visit with the Queen. So that suggests that Charles is not the agent of peace, like this headline a week afterwards suggested, where he was apparently but also publicly welcoming them to the family jubilee event. You see, what I think is that King Charles is all about the olive branches when they're public, because his reasons are to improve public opinion on him. But behind closed doors, I think it's a different story. And I don't really think he's as keen as Prince Harry and Meghan fostering good relationships with the family, unless it involves him or it's on his terms. But it also is the press committing to this villain theme so that even if an olive branch was offered to the Sussexes and they accepted, they're still villains. I mean, seriously, I think that via these sources, the British press are absolutely fantastic fiction writers. In conclusion, my thoughts are that when you see an olive branch headline, side eye it. It's either not true at all or it's just not genuine and it's there to make the offerer look good when behind the scenes it's quite a different story. Then, as well as that, think about if Harry and Meghan were to take the olive branch that they'd probably still end up being stitched up and cast badly anyway. Now, in the next video, I will be looking at the olive branches offered by Prince William and Kate Middleton to the Sussexes and how they too are not quite what they seem. Join me in that part too. But for now, please do let me know your thoughts. Comment down below, but also make sure that you hit that notification bell, like this video and subscribe to the channel. But for now, that's it.
peacing them out.